Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. We are so excited you're here with us. Each institution will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered tonight. So feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. We are currently in session A3, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our very first representative from the Cooper Union. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay. Can you guys see that? Looks good. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, so my name is Mai Kurdich and I'm from the Cooper Union. Um, I work in the Office of Admissions and I'm also a graduate of the School of Architecture. Um, so Cooper was founded on the mission by, um, on the historic mission of the founder, Peter Cooper, um, on the visionary belief that a world-class education should be accessible to all members of society without regard to gender, race, religion, wealth, or social status. So this founding mission um, is a big reason for a lot of people wanting to come to Cooper and being interested in Cooper. Um, we have a campus in New York City. So we basically have New York City as our campus. Our two academic buildings are the two on the left and the tall brown building is our dorm building. We only have dorms for first year students, um, but as you can see, it's super close or it's just across the street from our two academic buildings. So that's the closest you'll live to campus. Um, and yeah, both of the buildings architecturally are just really amazing buildings in the fabric of New York City, um, which makes sense. We have an architecture, engineering, and art school. Um, so yeah, the vision to inspire, we have a really small community. Cooper's only about 900 students total. So it's a really small school. You have a lot of face time with faculty, no matter which of the three majors you're in. Um, 15 to 30 students per class on average. As you can see here, this is a typical class size. Um, it's really intimate, tight-knit, collaborative. Um, it's not competitive, I would say. It's a really amazing community of students. Um, and so, like I mentioned, we have three majors. Um, Cooper is unique in the way that we only have three disciplines. You apply immediately to the school that you're interested in. You don't just apply undecided. Um, so we have architecture, which is a five-year professionally accredited um, Bachelor of Architecture degree program. And that's what you need to become a licensed architect in the United States. Um, we have a School of Art, which has no majors. It's an integrated Bachelor of Fine Arts program. So you learn how to work across disciplines, um, drawing, painting, sculpture, photography, graphic design. Um, and then we have the School of Engineering, which is, it has four ABET accredited majors. Um, so we have chemical, civil, electrical, mechanical, and then we have a general engineering major. Um, those come with minors as well and lots of project-based learning. Um, you see a little bit snippet of what our studios and labs look like here too. Um, we have amazing lab facilities. Um, you can weld, you can cast metal, you can screen print, you can build robots. Um, a lot of the faculty in engineering use the labs at, for research so you can help them with research projects. Um, and you're trained in your first year to use all of these tools in the shop um, and you'll always have staff on hand to help you through it. Um, student life, like I mentioned, the residence hall, we have a peer mentorship program, study abroad, internship, student government, um, tons of clubs that vary depending on who's at the school at a certain time, but you can also initiate your own club. Um, we have affinity groups, 
a couple of sports teams. Um, and then life in the East Village is really amazing. Um, it's a really vibrant neighborhood, lots of amazing food, um, restaurants, stores, um, just great culture in the East Village. Financial aid, every admitted student is automatically awarded a half tuition scholarship um, at $22,275. So this is in keeping with Cooper's mission of our eventual goal to return back to free. Um, so everyone gets a half tuition scholarship for all four or five years if you're in architecture. Um, also apply for FAFSA for additional financial aid. Um, so the application requirements, um, we have the Common App. SAT, ACT is test optional. We, have, we require transcripts, letters of recommendation, and then um, each of the three majors have school-specific material, which is a very important part of the application. Um, for engineering, it'll be essay questions, and for architecture and art, it'll be these pretty involved um, visual projects that you complete in response to a set number of questions or prompts um, that the faculty design each year. Um, that you should hear more about at our um, open houses in the fall. I encourage you to attend. Um, since you're here in New York City, you should definitely come check Cooper out for yourself in person. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now. I might be a little bit quick, but. No worries, thank you. The next representative is from SUNY Polytechnic Institute. Okay, everyone can see this. Wonderful. Let me just set the timer for myself. Hi, folks. My name is Alyssa Steele. I'm an admissions advisor at SUNY Polytechnic Institute. We're one amazing campus with two, or one amazing college rather, with two unique campuses, one in Utica, New York, and one in Albany, New York. I'm actually presenting to you from our Utica campus right in the heart of central New York. You can see that uh, yellow gold dot right there. And then our Albany campus is home to our College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering. That college has two undergraduate majors, Nanoscale Science and Nanoscale Engineering. But here at our Utica campus, you'll get the remaining 24 of our 26 programs. There we go. So you may be familiar with US News and World Report and that they rank each institution on a whole variety of criteria. SUNY Poly is categorized in the regional universities North category, and we perform quite well in that category. We're proud to be number two in the top public schools, uh, public schools ranking. In addition, we're number 12 in the entire category. So we're number two for public schools, but number 12 with all public and private schools in the regional um, universities North category. We're number four for best colleges for veterans and number 20 on top performers for social mobility. At SUNY Poly, you'll come to uh, enjoy an institution with about 2,200 undergraduate students. We have about 800 graduate students, so our total student population hovers around 3,000 every year. Our average class size is 18, our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1, and the number of students who live on campus every year in one of our four residential halls is around 900. All those numbers mean that your experience here at SUNY Poly is personalized and individualized. A lot of folks will tell you, you're not just a number here, you're a name. And we truly believe that. We want to get to know you, your passions, your interests, the things that light your proverbial fire, the things that you will continue to do that will make a positive impact in, in your communities. And we're here to help you do that. The 18 average class size is really for those core courses, the courses that are relevant to your degree program. You may have a little bit of a larger class for some of your introductory general education classes. As a member of the State University of New York system or SUNY, you are we are required to have our students complete 30 credit hours in the general education curriculum. Those courses are something like introduction to history or introduction to writing. In those courses, you may see 30 to 35 students, but still incredibly manageable. We're proud to have our classes taught by faculty who hold the, hold the highest degree possible in their degree field. 
We also have adjunct faculty who are practitioners in their field. At the end of the day, you are never taught by a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant. You are taught by the faculty who is assigned to that particular course. Again, you're taught by those faculty who hold that terminal degree in their field. They're researchers, they're experts in the field that you're taking the class in. I mentioned that we have 26 undergraduate programs within five colleges. The College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Business, the College of Health Sciences, and the College of Engineering are housed right here at our Utica campus. Again, where I'm presenting to you from today. Our, two, uh, our fifth college is the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering, again, located at our Albany campus with those two undergraduate degree programs. We also offer several accelerated programs. These are four plus one programs. That means you are in your bachelor's degree and then you spend an additional year here and you are in your master's degree. Our accelerated programs are in communication and information design and information design technology. It's a graphic design uh, media communications program. Computer science, we have a BS to MS computer science program. We have a fast track MBA program. And for our transfer students, we have an accelerated program to a uh, master's in nursing. A little bit about what we're looking for for our applicants, first year students at our Utica campus programs. We're looking for you to have a B plus average with a GPA of about an 87 to a 93. We're currently SAT optional. And when we um, do a look at your SAT scores, we're looking for you to have about an 1100 to a 1290 or an ACT score of a 24 to a 27. You'll notice that our Albany campus programs have just slightly higher requirements. That's because the context of their programs is just a, um, a little bit more specific. So you're looking to have an A minus to an A average. The middle 50% of applicants at our Albany campus have a 90 to a 95 GPA, a 1290 to a 1420 SAT score, and a 29 to a 32 ACT score. You can begin applying to SUNY Poly on August 1st via the SUNY app or the Common app. We will need your official high school transcript. Any, um, if you want to submit your SAT scores to us, again, as a reminder, we're optional, please do so. We're not sure if we'll be optional for fall 2023, so keep an eye out for that. More information to come, you'll be on our email list, so you'll get that information as soon as we have it. And finally, you'll need at least one letter of recommendation from a school counselor or a teacher. As a state school, we, have, uh, we offer SUNY tuition. So we are uh, $7,070 for in-state tuition and our room and board is about 14,000. Uh, 14, You're looking at a sticker price of around 21 to 22,000 to attend SUNY Poly. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about our campuses with you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Our representatives are here and available to answer your questions. The next representative is from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Loveless. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I work at WPI or Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, WPI is considered a medium-sized university, and our focus is pretty exclusively on STEM fields. We offer about 53 different majors, and almost all of them are within science, technology, engineering, math, and business. Um, engineering is our largest department on campus. Computer science is our largest single major on campus. Um, and there's a lot to explore within our degree programs. I will tell you, you're never locked into or locked out of a major at WPI. You can always change your major until you find that thing that's right for you. We're about 5,000 undergraduate students. Um, we are proud to have 40% women. We've made some good growth with women on our campus in recent years. 14% uh, students of color, as well as 9% international students. Um, I know you have a great robotics team at Brooklyn Tech, so I wanted to give a shout out to our FIRST Robotics Scholarships. The founder of FIRST Robotics, Dean Kamen, is a WPI alumni, um, and we love everything that you learn from being a part of a FIRST Robotics team, so much so that we have two FIRST Robotics full tuition scholarships every year. 
Another reason to consider WPI is great return on investment with our students making about $73,000 a year after graduation. Um, I wanted to welcome you to Worcester virtually. Um, we are up in central Massachusetts, about an hour outside of Boston, um, about three, three and a half hour drive from New York City. We are the second largest city in New England with about 200,000 people in the city. Um, a lot of those people are college students because there's 10 colleges in the city of Worcester. Um, so you get the chance to meet students from all different colleges as part of your WPI experience. Um, and real easy transportation options with buses departing to New York City multiple, multiple times a day. The key thing I want you to know about WPI or remember about WPI is our focus on project-based learning. Um, every class that you take at WPI uh, will contain some sort of project that you'll work on, but these four projects listed on the screen are kind of our big projects at WPI. Um, so the Great Problem Seminar is a first-year project where you learn about one of the world's great problems, and then you try to solve a part of that problem. So we're not asking our first-year students to solve the energy crisis, but maybe they're going to redesign a wind turbine blade to generate more electricity. Um, so it's an interesting take on a first-year project experience. Humanities and arts at WPI is really popular. Um, although very few of our students are majoring in humanities, all of our students take humanities classes. What we ask you to do is to take six humanities classes during your four years at the university in whatever humanities subject is interesting to you. English, history, music, theater, foreign language, the list goes on. The sixth class is some sort of capstone project. So if you took a lot of music classes, maybe you're going to um, recompose music to go along to your favorite video game as your humanities project. The IQP and the MQP are the big projects at WPI. Um, there were three courses of credit, so they take a little bit of time to complete with the IQP happening in your junior year and the MQP happening in your senior year. The interactive qualifying project is interdisciplinary, meaning it's not specific to your major. The MQP is the major qualifying project, so that is specific to your major. My favorite thing about the projects is that you get the chance to travel. Um, every WPI student receives up to $5,000 in a global scholarship, and you can take that money and travel to any one of those red dots that you see on the map in front of you, and you're gonna be traveling with a group of WPI students and you're gonna be tackling a problem that is unique to that community. So if you're in Costa Rica, maybe you'll be working on sustainable fishing initiatives. If you're in Australia, maybe you'll work on wildfire prevention alert systems. If you're in Hong Kong, maybe you're working on reducing single use plastic silverware in the takeout restaurants. It's a great way to see another part of the world um, and have a unique experience while completing a WPI graduation requirement. I do want to uh, call your attention to kind of the things that we care about in the admissions process. We are a school that really does look for emphasis on your fit for WPI. We do so many projects that we are looking for collaborative learners um, who like to work in teams. When we look at the transcript, we like to see strong courses in math and science. WPI is test blind. We do not accept the SAT or the ACT. And we did that very intentionally because we wanted to be able to really focus on the fit. The SAT doesn't test collaboration. It doesn't test innovation. It doesn't test creative problem solving. And those are all things that we care a lot about. You can apply to WPI early action, early decision, or regular decision, whatever timeline makes sense for you. I will pause there and put our visit options up on the screen, and I look forward to connecting with you later. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. The next representative is from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn. I'm just gonna share my screen. Hopefully you can see a welcome slide. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so let's 
see. Let's get started. I also am going to set a timer for myself because I'm really bad at time. Um, but I'm so glad to be here and so glad to uh, have you Brooklyn Tech amazing students in the audience um, and some families too. So just in case, you know, maybe you know UMass Amherst, maybe not, but um, we are a big university and we are located about three to four hours north of you in Brooklyn. I used to live in Brooklyn myself. I miss it, but I love it up here so much. Um, and I think you might too. So definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, depending on how you know you want to get up here, maybe it's car, bus, train, um, will kind of depend on your route up here. But again, usually for me, it takes between three to four hours, um, which is not so bad. And um, I know I was laughing, you know, it, it doesn't quite have the vibe of where Cooper Union is, but it is a great college town. So if you come up, check it out. It's uh, Amherst is ranked among the best college towns in the whole country. And we love that. Um, a few other fun facts about UMass, if you like rankings, which a lot of us in admissions do not, but um, we use them anyway, just in case, you know, we are a, a ranked public university in this country and um, we have a ton of academic options for you. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. Um, we have a ton of research here, Research One University, and you are going to find that no matter what major you do here at UMass, you're going to have research opportunities, many of them starting, if you want, your first year here. Um, and it's optional. You do not need to do research, but just know as a Research One University, you know, our professors are required to do and publish top level research. And we also have almost 6,000 grad students here at UMass, and um, they are also open to research with you and publish with you, um, and you just have a lot of that going on. And speaking of a lot, we are a big school, 23,000 undergrads um, added to those, you know, 6,000 grad students I mentioned, and with that big size comes a really big, robust, um, amazing alumni network. So around the world, we have about 300,000 um, alumni for you to network with. And that comes in really handy when you're, you know, looking for jobs, just general, general opportunities, internships. Um, and my favorite statistic, <laughs> my colleagues know that I love this so much. Um, we're ranked number one in the whole country for our food on campus um, and our dining hall. So if you come visit, have a meal, check it out, see if you agree. I do agree. I've been to a lot of colleges and I really, really love the food at UMass. And not only is it good um, and just like so many diverse cuisines that they make really well here, but also they use a lot of local food and they do a lot towards sustainability too. So it's um, holistically good in terms of food. So academically, um, similar to some of my colleagues here, you know, we break ourselves down into these smaller colleges within the bigger university, and you're going to find the majors that you might be looking into in these areas. So, you know, maybe you're interested in the College of Education or in the majors within engineering or the liberal arts, you know, in the College of Humanities and Fine Arts um, or computer science and informatics. We've got an amazing business school which is called the Eisenberg School of Management. You'll find the business majors in there. You'll find our College of Natural Sciences, um, a very big college with so many majors in there, um, and including if you, you know, want to go pre-med, all the pre-health advising tracks are also in there. We have the fully accredited School of Public Health and Health Sciences. We have an awesome College of Nursing, and we have the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, you know, where you'll find political science, legal studies, and so many other things. Um, you know, including pre-law, if you want to go to law school and be a lawyer and all that. So with all these opportunities at UMass, know that you don't have to do just one, okay? You can do, you know, you can double major, you can add on a minor, you can do more than one of these areas for sure. And you can come in undecided into our exploratory tracks um, into any of these areas too. So you're going to have a lot of supports in, you know, kind of finding and refining your academic path at UMass. Um, but one thing just to keep in mind, if UMass is on your list to maybe apply to, is that we do read applications by the major that you put as being your first choice. And so some of these are going to be harder to um, get into than others, you know, more competitive to get in. And I just like to say the ones that are kind of the most competitive to get into in case, you know, in case that's a factor for you and in, in looking at your, your best fit 
um, things. So really the hardest to get into are nursing, computer science, and business at this point in time. Um, also psychology is very competitive uh, in the sense that it is our most popular major and a lot of people, even more people than ever are applying into psychology. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind that you know once you get here, you can add on almost any major or work your way into almost any major, but the School of Nursing does not let you transfer in and uh, the School of Business does not let you transfer in. So those are the two direct admit. So reach out to me with any questions as you go through, if you're you know, confused about what major to put, you know, not every college does it that way. So you, you, know, you may not have to worry about that because we know you're gonna grow and change in college and change your mind and that is fine. Um, so cost, we are a good, up. Oh, I'm almost done. Good value college, um, have a lot of aid to give you on top of that. We have an honors college and we have a lot of internships and co-ops on top of that great research I mentioned, as well as any major you can study abroad, study away. So stay in touch and thanks for listening. Great, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button. Any questions at all about the college application process, or even if you have any questions um, specific to any of the colleges represented here, we encourage you to include the school name. Now we're gonna hear from our next two representatives. First, our next would be Bard College. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks for being here, everyone. I'm really excited to be here with you and to share a little bit with you about BARD and what we do. My name is Kate Hardy, she, hers. I am Senior Associate Director of Admission at BARD. I'm also a BARD alumna, class of 2007, um, which is starting to feel longer and longer ago, but I'm always happy to speak from both my admissions director self and also my alumna self um, in whatever way would be helpful. And this is how to contact me. Um, I'll share that in the chat a little bit later too. Um, I chose this photo really intentionally as my cover photo because I feel like it is emblematic of so much that is important and distinctive about BARD. Um, it's actually a photo of our matriculation uh, process, which is um, a really distinctive ceremony that happens at the end of the language and thinking program, which is sort of our academic and social orientation for first year students, a really distinctive, dynamic, exciting part of our academic structure, um, but also a time for students to sort of settle into their college experience in a way that's not graded and in a way that allows them to really connect with the community dynamically um, and enthusiastically. Um, so this is a really important day on campus for us and our students. Um, in the background is a, a, a house called Manor House that's actually a residence hall. It's an 18th century mansion. Um, so you can live in an 18th century mansion as a Bard student. Um, it has a really important social space and cafe on the ground floor. Um, and in a lot of ways, I think it's sort of representative of how Bard is um, a really classical liberal arts college. Um, and a lot of that comes through in our first year program, especially our first year seminar great books curriculum. In the foreground is a really amazing large scale sculpture called Stargon that I think is representative in a lot of ways of the unapologetic presence of the arts within our campus community and our academics. Um, and I also love the socks. Um, Bard students are expressive and inclusive um, and original and they're really encouraged to um, sort of step into themselves um, and discover themselves in their in their identity and in terms of their academic interests as well. Um, Bard is located about two hours north of New York City in the Mid-Hudson River Valley. It's a beautiful, beautiful region of New York State. Um, we're the fusion of three different Hudson River Valley estates, so there is lots of wide open green space. We have our own little secluded corner of the Hudson River Valley called Annandale and Hudson. There is nothing in Annandale except for Bard. Um, so Bard has its own really vibrant and active campus culture um, right on the beautiful Hudson River across from the mountains, um, but we're also only two hours north of the city and this is the Amtrak train line, this line that bisects the river. Um, so we're about a two hour train ride or two hour drive depending on how you cut it. Um, so we're able to draw from the resources of New York City without it taking away from the social scene on campus. And we're also not in the middle of nowhere. The Hudson Valley is a really vibrant place. Um, there are two smaller towns about five minutes away from campus where students can live and get on a shuttle and three smaller cities, Kingston, Hudson and Poughkeepsie within about a 20 to 30 minute radius. So um, there is life off campus as well that students can engage with in whatever way works for them. Um, 
we have all of the, the benefits that go along with being in a small liberal arts college campus community. So we have just under 1900 undergraduate students. Um, it is an undergraduate serving institution predominantly. Um, and students work incredibly collaboratively with their faculty. Um, you do not come in with a declared major. You get to sort of explore and choose that along the way. Um, and you get to do that in a way that you get to own. Um, and that is a really exciting part of being part of a small liberal arts college. Um, 100 percent of our students engaged in one-to-one -one learning through our senior project. Um, and again, we have a really vibrant social scene that is really for students by students um, and is driven by our over 180 student-run organizations and our residential campus life. And we have 47 different styles of residence hall and campus. So there are lots of different options to choose from. Um, BARD is also distinctive because we function as a network. So we are a campus in Annandale and Hudson. We also have an early college network. Um, two of our early colleges are in the five boroughs of New York City. Um, we have a network of campuses overseas and are a founding campus of the Open Society University Network and are also the founder of one of the largest degree granting prison education programs in the country. There's an amazing documentary called College Behind Bars that you can watch for free on PBS Learning Media. Um, it's a great window into how social, social justice and human rights and providing equity, equitable access to a liberal arts education is really woven into our mission and our institutional structure. Um, and that's a big part of what students are choosing when they're choosing BARD in contrast to other small liberal arts colleges. Um, again, we have a core curriculum that I spoke about a little bit already. Um, the most distinctive elements being our first three graduation requirements that happened in the first year, including language and thinking and first year seminar. And then again, we have a required senior project that is every student's opportunity to be making a real professional caliber contribution to their field. And that is a big part of what makes our students marketable in their lives after BARD as well. Um, this is the full menu of what you can choose from. You will engage with all of this at BARD. That is the beauty of the liberal arts is that you never have to choose. Um, and even after you choose a major, you are free to continue to explore outside of that. And in fact, are required to, to some extent as well. Um, this is a little bit of a menu of the different kinds of activities that we offer. Again, there are 180 student-run <laughs> clubs and organizations on campus, um, and we have lots of ways to apply, um, two of which are really distinctive to BARD. Um, one is called the BARD entrance exam, and the other is called immediate decision. Um, really distinctive participatory ways um, of getting a window into the experience as part of your application process. We have been test optional since the, the, the early 1970s, um, and there is no fee to apply. I'm going to drop my contact information to the chat and I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Thanks so much. Awesome. Before we, uh, our next representative, but certainly not least, is from the University of Buffalo SUNY. Well, hello and how are you? And thank you. Uh, it's awesome that Brooklyn Tech allows each and of us to uh, be able to come and share our information with you. It's absolutely valuable. Thank you, Ms. McKinnon, for inviting me and to the other um, colleges that are here. Welcome. Cool thing. Little video. Buffalo is more than a city. <clears throat> it's a state of mind. And a university at Buffalo is more than a college campus. It's a commitment to achieving more and demanding greater, to testing theories and proving ourselves, and to driving change and charging forward. Because UB is as much a way as it is a place of seeing the world, of engaging ideas, of inspiring action and taking the lead with people from all over, working together lifting each other up and accomplishing amazing things. Because at UB, ambition is a virtue, tenacity is a given, and discovery happens in the lab and in the lecture hall, in the studio and on the stage, in the field and on the field, and everywhere in between. That's just how we do it here, where it's our place to be extraordinary and to show the world, here is how.
Well, welcome to the University at Buffalo, an inclusive community, right? Where everybody's involved, no matter who you are, what you are, we take care of all, and it is important. Welcome again to the University at Buffalo. My name is Glenn Taplin. I'm an admissions counselor, and I recruit all of Brooklyn, New York, and it's probably wherever they send me. It is 32,472 students um, at the University at Buffalo, right? And that sounds like a lot, and it is. The good news is they're not all in one class at one time. They used to think that the University of Buffalo was the school that only recruited students from New York City or just New York State. And as you can see in this, this graph here, that is not true. We're all over the place. We're all over the globe recruiting students to come to this fine academic excellence university. We are the number one public <clears throat> state school in New York, right? We are in the top 40 public schools. But the most important piece about this is that we're part of something called the AAU. Uh, the Association of American Universities. And why is that important? It's important because um, it recruits the top professors throughout the country to come to our university and teach at their discipline. And keep in mind, we are absolutely a research institute, right? And we also allow freshmen, when they enter to the University at Buffalo, we allow freshmen right away to work hands in hand with those um, professors that are from um, those great professors um, part of the AAU that it is. There's some excellent, an excellent menu of um, um, programs that are at the University at Buffalo, um, School of Law, um, Nursing, Management, um, School of Public Health, um, Engineering, 10 different engineering um, programs at the University at Buffalo in which you can choose and study from. Um, and then there's two, there's, there's three campuses on our, on, at the University at Buffalo, and I'll try and get to those in a little bit too. 140 uh, graduate programs, combined degrees, 300 professional degrees, something down at the bottom, which is unique, extremely unique, and those classes are the micro-credentials and digital badges. Not a major, it's not a minor, it's a digital badge, right? Something that you receive and that they can uh, attach to your resume which makes your res resume look extremely big and healthy as well. Preparing you to succeed. What a great shot of our South Campus. And if I'm gonna make a joke about this, this picture probably was taken yesterday, but all there's no snow on the ground. So this is, okay, maybe not yesterday, but this is our South Campus, also known as our Buffalo Campus. 360 million in scholarships and financial aid. We have a finishing four program. I'm proud to say that my wife started the finishing four and it's exactly what it says. We want you to finish in four. We understand that nowadays that it takes five years to finish those four. This program um, allows you to finish in four if you follow the steps that they have provided for you. Our campus life is always lit. North Campus, one of the unique campuses about the University of Buffalo, because it's a tunnel system. So if it's snowing outside and you have to get from one building to another, there's an absolute tunnel. And then there's these right here, catwalks that can get you to other buildings. And if you can see far here, there's another catwalk. This campus is called North Campus or commonly known as Amherst. This is South Campus, Buffalo Campus. That's the library here. And also we have um, our dental program, which is on that side as well. So there's three campuses. This is the third, Grand Spankin' New. It is our medical center, downtown Buffalo in the medical corridor. It sits in between two hospitals, Roswell and Buffalo General. And it looks absolutely outstanding downtown. And it looks and feels and works just like a hospital as well. 400 clubs and organizations for you to join and partake. We are a division one athletic program, which means we play the best competition throughout the country and they come to our campus and we go to their campus as well. The dorms on our campus, housing, five apartment complexes, 35 different dining locations, two food trucks on our campus. So if you call home and say you didn't get something to eat, shame on you. Our alumni base is so cool. Thank you, Catherine. Um, our alumni base is so, so thick and so full. Just in New York State alone, 150,000 in, in, in New York State alone, and throughout the country, 280,000. I left some information in the chat room so you can contact me and get more detail as details come about. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Have a good day. Thank you, and what a great way to end. Thank you to all our representatives. We do have some time left. And so at this point, I invite all our representatives to please go ahead and turn on your cameras to get ready to unmute yourselves for our Q&A session. Um, we'll go ahead and start with our first question here, which is what advice would you give someone 
going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I guess the advice I'd give you is to be yourself. Um, and obviously it's a very overwhelming decision to try to decide what you're gonna study for the next four or five years, but um, don't put too much pressure on yourself to figure it out. Um, and then as you work to present yourself to different colleges and different people, just look internally more than externally. Um, so yeah, that's my advice. You know, I think at the end of the day, what matters is that you feel a fit and a, a safe place. Like you can be, as Maya was saying, your most authentic self at the, the institution that you choose. So really, it's I, if you get the opportunity and you, you have the ability to visit a campus, do so as much as you possibly can. Engage in these experiences one-on-one -on -one with advisors or counselors from each institution. We can give you a pretty good idea if your passions and interests align with those of our students. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what matters is that not only you feel supported academically, but that you feel like you can engage and and thrive co-curricularly as well. Uh, I agree with both of those sentiments. And um, my advice is that you should love every school that you put on your list. Um, I know you all are gonna have one or two dream schools, but I really want you to be as excited as possible to go to any school that you end up applying to, um, because I just think then you'll be happy wherever you end up. And I love all three of those actually, and just kind of bouncing off that, I think um, just remember that it's okay to ask questions of, you know, people like us, of your counselors at school, of, you know, students who you might meet at our schools or even, you know, online from our schools, because this is such a, you know, there's just so much new information that's going to be coming at you at, through this journey of applying to college. And there's no such thing as a bad question. And there's a lot it's just really confusing. So, you know, just remember that we're human beings back here working for these schools. And it is, you know, a, a part of our job that we love is to just like, try to help you through this um, the best we can. And so, um, yeah, so don't, you know, don't hesitate to use, um, use all of us, I guess. Um, I'm going to underline everything that's already been said and also just emphasize that you're already doing the right thing by being here at 545 on a Thursday. Um, <laughs> there are far more than 22 students in Brooklyn Tech's graduating class, um, and you are part of a very special group that is, is putting in the work and really getting to know the places that you could potentially land next year um, or in a couple of years, um, and that is the best thing that you can possibly do um, is just connect, um, connect with the places and learn about our resources and learn about the experiences and really envision yourself. Um, in the next phase of your life. Um, and, um, and you're doing that work right now. So, um, so yeah, thanks for being here. And definitely, um, you know, ha as has already been said, like there are humans on both sides of this process, remember that and, um, and continue to engage. You know, I think it's important to, during the college process is to keep your parents involved too. Not only is it your journey, it's their journey as well. Um, I remember when my son decided he was going to a school in Oklahoma, I, I felt like, yeah, we got one out the house, but then you start to miss him. And then you start to go, not only is it a journey for him, it's a journey for me. Keep your parents involved. Make sure you take your time. Um, be honest with yourself. Make sure it's a good fit school for you. If it's not, then you shouldn't go. Pick a school that you're going to get the greatest experience from and that you're going to meet some folk right, that you're going to that you're going to remember for the rest of your life and see for the rest of your life. So make sure you make a, a honest decision on where you want to be for your next four years, five years or six years, depending on what what degree you're pursuing. So much great advice. Um, I just want to say thank you to all our representatives um, and just 
their insight, um, especially for those who are going through the college application process. Um, any advice is really helpful during this time. And so again, thank you for, for sharing. Um, and that's all we have time for tonight. Um, so thank you um, for joining us. We really appreciate it. As we close, it'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, we would greatly appreciate it. Again, this is one of many college presentations being offered tonight. So feel free to check out the website for more. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. Again, thank you all and have a great night. Thank you.